my name is Andrea. I am working our in the admissions with the admissions team at Ross School. Um, I'm very happy to introduce to uh, to you the the two leading our panel today. Um, we have Sienna Gillespie Grant, who is a current eighth grade student at Ross School, and she has been she's a day student and has been a part of the Ross community since pre nursery. Yep. Okay. <laughs> nice to meet you. Hi. Um, and then uh, the Dean of our Performing Arts Department, Adam Judd. And so I'm gonna ask Adam to talk a little bit about his background and then to also talk, uh, he's got a, a presentation about our Performing Arts Department for all of you. Hello everybody, uh, nice to see you all today. Uh, thank you for joining us. And um, so my, my background, uh, I, I grew up, uh, let's see, I have, my family goes kind of back a few generations as far as being involved in music and, and performance. And um, so I got involved with music and theater and dance um, during junior high and high school and uh, enjoyed it so much. I decided to go to Otterbein College and get a, a degree in musical theater. And then I went on to Ohio State University and got a master's degree in conducting. And uh, so I love my job at Ross because I get to do a little bit of all the things that I um, enjoy and that I kind of have, have skills and strengths in, um, some dance, some theater, some uh, arranging music, composing music, uh, conducting, uh, leading choirs and, and instrumental groups and you know mentoring students in doing some aspect of these things themselves. So um, what I was hoping I could do is, is share my screen with you and show you a little bit of a presentation that I have put together. Let's see if I can remember how to do this from a few hours ago. <laughs> um, oh, there it is, the big green button, okay. And I'm gonna move you guys all down to the bottom here. Hmm. Well, let's see. Ah, oh, there we go. All right, can you see my PowerPoint now? All right, great. Um, so welcome, I'm just gonna uh, quickly go through what happens at the various levels of uh, the school in terms of performing arts. So in uh, the lower school, which is up through grade six, everybody studies theater um, throughout the year. They have theater classes. Uh, we have a great theater teacher, Margaret Kessler, who works with everybody. Um, every second year, we do a performance at the end of the year with the lower school called Beginnings, uh, which is where each grade level will um, enact and put on stage some aspect of the uh, spiral curriculum. Uh, and in the sixth grade, when um, the students are, are studying Alexander the Great and Hellenism and um, that you know bringing of uh, the Greek sort of cultural values to other parts of the world, uh, the students perform uh, Greek tragedies with uh, Mr. Doyle, my theater colleague. So let me just show you a little clip from uh, about a month ago. The proper calculus will see that everyone knows this intended sacrifice. I feel myself quite helpless. Over my allows, take all precaution that I can extra not to steal my plan to sacrifice such an item. And you, guard my secret well. Many are the natures of man. Various demands of living, yet a straight path is always the right one. So that's a little, uh, little bit from Iphigenia uh, in Aulis. Uh, you can see the, the king, his conflict, and then the chorus commenting on it. Um, and everybody also studies music in the lower school. Um, so here's some pictures from our winter concert and, and I'll play some examples for you a little bit later on. Um, everybody sings, uh, everybody studies classroom instruments like ukulele, percussion, and recorder. 
uh, and then they have the option to join the band or orchestra starting in grade three um, if they want to pursue playing um, one of those types of instruments, violin, viola, cello, bass, um, or any of the woodwind or percussion instruments or brass instruments. Uh, when we get to middle school, uh, students begin to specialize a little bit more. So um, they'll select whether they're going to enroll in band, in chorus, in orchestra, or in a few cases, uh, students who enjoy singing but also play an instrument will do both band and, and chorus or orchestra and chorus. Um, and everyone continues to study theater, but instead of being uh, all year long, it's for a specific uh, curricular uh, moment in the year. So while the seventh graders are studying ancient Rome, they uh, put on an abridged uh, production of Julius Caesar, which I'll show you a clip of in a minute. And in the eighth grade, uh, they do something called a Young Artist um, Writing Project, or YAWP. Um, and that's uh, generally in the spring. They um, will uh, meet with some experienced playwrights who will help and guide them to create their own plays, which they then um, direct each other in and uh, put on stage. And, and they do a performance of their own plays and the best ones are selected to be part of a festival uh, with other area schools. Uh, here's a little clip from Julius Caesar, which also just happened about a month ago. The eyes of March are come. I, Caesar, but not come. Are we all ready? What is now missed? That Caesar has said it must redress. Most high, most mighty, the most powerful Caesar. But tell Simmer, throw it before thy seat, humble heart. That's our, um, that takes place in our lecture hall, which is one of the, the lovely performance spaces that we have at the school. It's in our senior building. When we, uh, when we reached the high school, uh, which are you all going into high school? Is, is that, am I correct about that? I think. Um, yes, so we have a couple of, uh, we have somebody going into 10th grade and a couple going into ninth grade here. Okay, and I wasn't sure. I, I thought I saw a couple other people joining I, who we haven't met yet. But uh, in the high school, the performing arts moves to electives and extracurricular activities. So we have, um, you can see the electives listed there. There's music electives. Um, there's an acting elective. Uh, and then we have dance electives that also become available to the high school students. And uh, one, I'll show you an example from one of the winter electives. Um, Sienna, who's on the, the panel with us today, was in this elective, even though she's technically still in middle school. Um, and we were able to kind of work around her um, middle school schedule and get her into this high school elective, create a dance where um, the students are performing uh, pieces that they and their classmates have uh, created. And then uh, our extracurriculars uh, include our one act plays in the fall. So uh, we put together a series of, you know, anywhere depending on how many students are involved that particular year, it's anywhere from, you know, seven to maybe 12 uh, short plays. And so all the students that are involved can, can have an important role. Um, and those that are, you know, really big into theater um, are sometimes in several of the plays that are presented. And other students who are maybe younger or, or just trying it out 
uh, for the first time uh, will just be in one of the plays or sometimes students who are also on a sports team in the fall will take part in the one act plays because they're able to commit you know to a, a, a role that only is part of a play that takes five or eight minutes rather than uh, committing to a full-length play. In the spring we do a musical um, or a musical review. Last year uh, we did a production of Annie. This year we're going to do uh, a musical review where we select uh, scenes from various shows that lead into songs and we're um, piecing those together into a show that, that sort of has its own uh, abstract narrative. Uh, here's a, a little montage of some scenes from uh, previous one act performances and one of our uh, musical productions. This is called Backwards Bank Robbery. This is elevator hijack. They're all trapped in the elevator together. And the baby needs to have its diaper changed. You probably recognize Chicago. And all that jazz. Hold on, oh, we got a body high. I got some aspirin, done a naughty drug. In case we shake off the fight, I wanna bring you sight. Do do that. The, um, those took place in our court theater. Um, it's called the court theater because it's most of the time is a basketball volleyball court, but it can be converted into a uh, an extremely nice uh, performing space. We put the the flame the, the floor down and the the curtains up, and we have a great lighting system. Um, so that's the court theater performing space. And when you saw Sienna dancing, that was in the great hall, which is another beautiful space that we use for performing arts um, shows. Uh, here's a, a little clip from our holiday concert that took place in December. And here's a few excerpts from our winter concerts. Um, we have uh, a concert that features the high school students each at the end of each trimester because the electives are enrolled by trimester. So we have a concert at the end of the fall term, at the end of the winter term, and then at the end of the spring term. Um, so here's a, a created dance um, students again, including Sienna.
So those are all um, the kinds of things that we normally get up to when um, we can be on campus and can have groups of people gather together uh, to watch our live performances. Um, we really enjoy that. It's great to, you know, have your your efforts of preparation and all the polishing you've done be appreciated then and there by um, a live audience. But right now, obviously, we're working under different circumstances. Um, so we're still finding ways to make these things work. Um, our performing arts teachers are doing online lessons, um, holding theater rehearsals over Zoom. Uh, and for our, our musical review, for example, um, we're figuring out the, the technological um, you know, processes that we need to undergo in order to uh, have the scenes be filmed uh, with you know, everybody each safely in their own home. Uh, singing their song and, and doing the scenes, but still have interaction and, and have, um, you know, basically in, instead of being a, just a musical director this term, I get to be a film editor and a, a kind of a film director <laughs> and figure out how to um, put together the, the footage of one student in one place and another student in another place, and then maybe some Zoom footage of both of them on the screen at the same time, and kind of make that into a, you know, a musical review that can be shared digitally and uh, that everyone can watch without, um, you know, risking the the contact that could continue spreading the, the the virus here. So here's a little, a few excerpts of of what people are getting up to as we prepare for our spring um, virtual performances. There is a saying that there is no life without hope. Our hope is an expression of confidence in life. This is a time of hope, a time to reflect on our collective journey. <laughs> to overcome, to live on. And to know we are not alone. Hmm. So that, that's the end of my um, presentation. I'd love to um, hear any questions that you have, uh, if you wanna um, put them in the chat or ask them out loud. And uh, I'm sure that I can do my best to answer or Sienna can, can answer if it's more about the student's perspective on, uh, on the program. I will un I'll unmute everyone if you'd like to, or like he said, he, Adam said, you can put it in the chat. Um, but I, I will ask Sienna while, while everyone's formulating their questions, if you um, want to share a little bit about your experience with um, the performing arts department in, at, at Ross. Sure. Um, so hi guys, I'm Sienna. Um, I'm like a day student at Ross um, and I'm going into ninth grade next year. And I'm not like an actor, singer, whatever, but um, <laughs> yeah, but I'm a dancer and I do like dance at Ross. Um, and I think it's just like a really nice environment to be a part of because I know that it's going to be the same if you're a singer, you're an actor, whatever, the whole like performing arts at Ross, it's like the same kind of like environment. And it's like almost like you're all like a family, you spend like lots of hours together, like working on like what you're passionate about. It's not like normal school because um, normal school is like you take all these classes that you like might not want to take and like you might not be passionate about, but for everyone that's in the performing arts, they like want to be there. So, everyone like it's almost like a yeah it's just like a family basically um everyone becomes really close you make like new friends you get to do what you love um the teachers are like really fun and they're like 
they like help you every step along the way and they also make sure like they're always like cracking jokes and like making sure you guys have fun they like go above and beyond to like make it like a fun experience for you so it's not like it's like a class or a job or whatever um and if you ever need like any help or if you just want to talk to them they're like a advisor in a way um and they'll like stay over hours and like help you work on something like like you were saying before um like I was always like in the studio with my dance teacher and she was always like helping me go through my dance like making sure everything was okay like hours after the class had passed because they like really care about like you they care about like making sure that you can be like the best that you want to be and like go where you want to go mm -hmm. um so yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and one of the things you brought up earlier too, Sienna, was that um, you know, if you if you want it to happen or if it's an instrument you want to study or or you know, or a solo you want to do, that that there are faculty that are there to make that happen for you. Um maybe yeah. Adam can maybe Adam can elaborate a little bit on that. Yeah, so you know, sometimes uh, what you do might be a little more individual or um, might fall outside of our normal electives. Uh, you know, maybe you play an instrument that you don't really think fits well into jazz band or chamber ensemble, although you'd be surprised at some of the instruments we've made work in chamber ensemble. But um, we can arrange uh, independent study courses so that, you know, you can pursue with the, the mentorship of a faculty member, um, you can pursue individual music or dance um, uh, or even um, theater, um, things that you wanna do. Um, and sometimes that, that may involve, you know, getting someone from outside the, the normal faculty to come in and, and teach lessons. Like I, I was uh, talking about how a, a couple years ago we had a student who really wanted to study mandolin, so I, you know, talk to all my connections in the area and managed to find someone who could teach that instrument and arranged for um, some private lessons for, the, for that student. Mm. Great. Um, and we have a question in the chat here um, asking if there is an improv group. Um, there is not a, an established improv group at the school, but there is, um, there's a lot of improv that happens in the, um, in the theater courses. So, um, you know, if there emerged a group of students that wanted to continue that as an extracurricular or something like that, I'm sure it could be arranged. Mm -hmm. uh, but both of our, our lower school and upper school theater teachers both um, uh, use a lot of improv exercises to help, uh, especially, you know, with people that are new to performing, um, that it helps them to, to sort of release from their inhibitions and uh, engage with each other. Mm -hmm. And is there a rock band? Sometimes. Um, <laughs> well, that's a very vague answer. Um, we've had rock bands that students have formed. Um, we also are, what we call our jazz band, uh, really it performs a, a lot of different styles of music, uh, which sometimes include uh, popular songs, rock songs, uh, we did Seven Nation Army in the fall, for instance. That was actually j uh, chamber ensemble and, and jazz band combined together. Um, so, so there's that aspect of it. But that we, we've also had uh, students that form bands together. Um, uh, yeah, one of my students from South Korea was, was big into that. Um, I think he formed three or four different bands over the course of his uh, time at the school. <laughs> he's, I, he's much better, much better at forming them than keeping them together. Yeah, well, ha. <laughs> um, but I think it's important to note that did he, was he allowed the opportunity to perform in the concerts? Yeah, absolutely. He, he performed, um, you know, a number of his original songs, uh, you know, in front of the the student body and, and it was you know i think something that everyone really enjoyed so um do we, at the end of the year do we perform in front of the whole school so uh 
yeah, the, the electives perform at the end of each term. So let's say you're in the, um, the modern dance elective in the fall, <clears throat> then you would have a performance uh, before the Thanksgiving break begins. Uh, and then the winter term, uh, you would have uh, a performance around Valentine's Day, President's Day, before we uh, move on to the, the field academy term. And then the spring um, performs at the, you know, close to the end of the school year. Like you always have like a goal that you're like working towards. So it's not like, it's just a, like, you do like go off and like do things that may not be a part of the performance. But like you always like have something that you're gonna like perform that you can look forward to and plan and that's what like at least for dance that's what it is like each trimester you have like your performance at the end of the trimester um, and the whole time you just spend like practicing making sure you're ready for that performance in the end. Mm -hmm. uh, I see. Is there a large theater performance that everyone can participate in? So the in the lower school, the answer is absolutely yes. The, the beginnings performance um, involves the whole lower school, as Sienna can attest, because she's done that a couple times. Mm -hmm. um, and the spring musical tends to involve a, a fair number of kids. It's not everybody, but there are uh, a lot of students that are involved as performers. And then, um, you know, under normal circumstances, when we're in the theater on campus, uh, we have students that are changing the set, that are running the light board, uh, running the sound desk, um, you know, helping with costumes and that kind of stuff. Um, so it's, it involves quite a few people. And the same in the fall, we have students running the crew as well as uh, performing in the show. Great. Um, I uh, wanted to, well, that was for the, just to go back to the improv group, I wanted to point out that we did for Field Academy, there was a stand-up comedy class that happened um, on campus and in, and in New York City. And so, um, and I have, I have, I was, if I had been, if I wasn't new to Ross, I would have been able to say that I actually have taught stand-up comedy at an international school um, as part of a senior pop culture class, and it turned out really great, and I'm, uh, I'd hope to, to revamp that again, too, so if you're interested in the comedic, um, you know, a writing or, or comedic acting um, uh, or stand-up, that I, you know, that's something that we have some faculty on campus with experience in, definitely, so. Improv's not far off from that. That's where all the ideas come from, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I uh, will, I want to talk a little bit more about our facilities. We didn't dive too deeply into that. You, you touched a little more on it in this session, um, but the court theater is a really, I just want you to talk a little bit more about how that transforms because I came from a performing or from an arts uh, boarding school prior to this. I was at Idaho Wild Arts Academy. And so we had, you know, a few facilities that were pretty state of the art. Um, and when I saw the court theater, I was like, hmm, I wonder how well this, you know, transitions, but it's a beautiful, it really is a beautiful theater space when it, when it transforms. Um, can you talk a little bit about that and our faci other facilities? Sure. So uh, the court theater, um, so if you can just imagine a, a gym, but then um, we put up all the, the curtains that frame the stage. Um, we have the, the cyclorama and the scrim in the back um, so that we can pr project light on that to, to make backdrops. Um, and then we have uh, these great stadium uh, style seats that, you know, so that when you're close to the stage, you're, you're sitting just a, a little bit above the floor level, but then it, they keep going up uh, as you go further back. So everyone in the, in the uh, seats can see everything going on on stage, no matter how far back they are. Um, we have a great sound system in there, uh, speakers all around. Uh, um, and we have a, a lighting grid. So we, you know, we have professional uh, level lighting for, for our shows. You, you may have noticed how well lit the, the shows were that I showed you the clips of um, all different colors and, and ability to isolate portions of the stage or 
flood the whole stage with light as needed for the, that particular theatrical moment. Um, so it, it, that, that's a great space. And then as I um, mentioned, when we were going through the different performances, we also do some things in the senior lecture hall, which is that smaller stage with the woods in the background. Um, that's where we, uh, I guess we do the sixth grade and the seventh grade um, curricular performances there, the, the Greek tragedies and uh, Julius Caesar. Um, and we also do some musical performances in there. Um, and we have our senior project performances during that time of the year. And then um, our biggest performing space is the Great Hall in the Center for Wellbeing. And that's where you saw the, the dancing taking place from our winter concert. And so um, that's the space where we can have the whole school be part of a performance, you know, as an audience. Um, uh, this, the court theater seats about 200 people uh, but we can fit the entire student body and all the faculty into the um, into the great hall. So we use that when we want everybody to be able to watch all at the same time. Great. Um, and we also uh, should mention that the that the Gandhi Hall, otherwise, well, it's it's known as Gandhi Hall, but our dance. Uh, room is beautiful and uh, the music room um, downstairs in the 11th grade media building is also beautiful with private practice rooms. Um, where did the theater classes typically take place on campus, Adam? Uh, that room that you mentioned in the lower level of the media building is, is a, where a lot of the theater classes take place. Um, cool. We also use um, Sometimes the Duomo, which is in the high school building, which is, it's a like a dome shaped room. Um, so that's an, another space that, that sometimes we use for theater rehearsals or, or theater instruction. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, and then my, my other question is, uh, what are there for students who would like, what, are, what beginning classes do we offer in the performing arts for students who are interested in trying something different or um, you know, just getting into a particular art form? Um, so we kind of think of, in terms of instrumental study, uh, you know, if you're beginning to the extent where you're really just picking up the instrument, then uh, I would probably recommend starting out with individual lessons. Mm -hmm. um, but some students who have some experience on an instrument will join the chamber ensemble and, and gain more experience with their instrument. Because there's a lot of flexibility with that group to um, select music and adapt music to the level of ability of, of each performer. Um, you know, whether that means making the music uh, choosing music that's simpler for beginning performers or choosing music that that really highlights the you know the high level of skill of another performer mm -hmm. um, so we kind of think of chamber music as more of our um, more welcoming maybe to to beginning instrumentalists whereas the jazz band uh, there's kind of an expectation that you have more experience before you come into that group um, in terms of singing, um, you know, again, independent study is a good way to get started. But you know, we've had uh, students in the chorus elective who come in with very little experience, and again, it's very adaptable to um, you know other students helping to mentor them, uh, with me helping to mentor them, and and expand the vocal range and uh, get them to have more confidence in, in what they can do. Because a lot of times what when it comes to singing, people are um, capable of more than they realize. Mm -hmm. uh, our acting elective in the fall is is great for people that are just starting to explore um, how to use their their voice and their body to express other people's words and you know temporarily inhabit other people's lives. Uh, Mr. Doyle is great, you know, working one on one with each student and. Um, helping them discover that that interacting ability that they didn't realize they had. Great. Um, 
And Sienna, uh, I would just ask that you, can you tell us a little bit about why you continue to, to come to Ross and why you, what, one of your favorite things about it? And, um, and yeah, if we could improve on anything <laughs> from the student perspective. Sure. Um, I think like what I love most about Ross is the like community that we have. Um, it's not a huge school, but in that case, like each class, you have this like one-on-one -on -one relationship with every student, and every teacher, and he creates like this community where everyone's like helping each other, and the teachers will like um, go to extra help with you and make sure that you get every single thing that, like every test, every everything that they'd ever teach. Um, and the curriculum, it's not like the normal standardized test type of curriculum. Um, it really like makes you want to learn, makes you want to like continue to grow and improve. Um, and I think Ross is just like really what you make it. Like if you really want to go and you really like want to become better at something, then Ross will be like right behind you, pushing you um, to get you to that goal. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, what, and tell me what you want to, tell me what you want to be when you grow up. Do you know what you want to be when you grow up yet, Sienna? Yeah, so um, I think I want to like continue dancing for the rest of my life because um, that's what I love. And I'm sure for you, like you love like singing or like performing arts and it's just something like that's a part of you and that you'll never like lose because you love it so much. Um, but I think when I grow up, I want to be like a business. I want to go into business and like international relations um, because that's what I love and I'm learning another language and I already speak Mandarin. Um, so by then I'm hoping I'll be trilingual mm -hmm. and um, at Ross, it was like, it's an international school. So you meet all these different students from different countries. And so I think that's why I like got my love for at least like international relations and like bridging that gap between like different countries and different people and like finding how similar we are and how we can like really work together um, to make the world like a better place and make it better for everyone, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. Out of curiosity, what's the third language you want to learn? Well, I'm learning like Arabic now. So that's like my <laughs> next language that I'm learning. Yeah. You pick the hard ones. Well, you have yeah. you, you have to take Mandarin at, at at Ross, but it's up to you whether or not you become fluent, right? Yeah. <laughs> but those are difficult languages. <laughs> yeah. Mm hmm Great. Um, and then Adam, if you have any um I think we're looking at three students who are, um, you know, more than likely coming to Ross. Uh, so if you have any advice for them um, as they embark on the Ross journey as a faculty member, do you have any words of wisdom? Just uh, get involved, you know, um, and let me know if, if you encounter any obstacles to scheduling what you want to schedule uh, in terms of your electives and we'll try to work out some way for it to happen for you. Um, you know, we, we've, we've solved a lot of logistical problems to, to get students in the classes that they wanna get into. So, um, you know, don't throw up your hands if you find out that you, you wanted to be in an acting elective and that's when your math class is happening or something. We'll, we'll figure something out. And there's, um, in, in, like, you know, as I had mentioned before, we have the, the fall play, we have the spring musical, um, um, and so there's, there's a lot of opportunities to, uh, you know, to indulge your passion for performing, for, for singing, for acting, and maybe explore a facet of performing arts that you hadn't, um, previously had experience with. Um, like I, I may have alluded to this before, but not everybody knows what they're capable of until they actually try things. So get involved. <laughs> Great. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Sienna or for Adam? Great. <laughs> it's okay if you don't. They were very thorough. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah, I, uh, I will say just from, from my perspective quickly, I, I think what um, has impressed me most, because as Sienna mentioned, Ross is a small school, um, that, that the variety of, of quality performances and, and classes that these students are, uh, have access to is very impressive. And uh, I talked early in the earlier session about um, a particular performance that impressed me was uh, the, you know, a student who did an acapella, um, had recorded, it was an acapella piece, but it was, the tracks had been recorded and she sang by herself on stage. And I thought that was such a great thing for her to have the opportunity to do that. Um, and I wanted to say too, that bank, uh, the bank robbery, the bank robbery in reverse, right? They did the whole thing forward right at the end, right? if I remember yeah. correctly, Adam. Yeah. So, I mean, pieces like that are, are um, very, very unique for a school that isn't necessarily, you know, an arts school, but Ross allows for, um, you know, for, for a lot of variety and for the student to really have be a student driven program. So if there's something you can dream of, um, Adam can probably make it happen for you. <laughs> Um, and I see that uh, Sienna answered Liv's question about how many classes you have a day. Um, and we, and right, and uh, one of those periods is lunch. Um, and, but what the great thing is, is that you have, uh, it, we operate on trimesters. And so your core classes, there are typically about five core classes, which leaves you with the opportunity to have between two and three electives each trimester, which means that you can try a lot of different things, um, which is, unless you're, <laughs> uh, right. sure, yeah. I hope everybody can see the chat, but that was, that was very funny. Um, yes, we do have, uh, Ross breeds um, some overachievers, uh, or, you know, just where we want you. Uh, so, <laughs> Sienna happens to be one of those. Um, but yeah, I, I think that I, I, I have obviously have a passion for it. I, I coach the varsity cheer team. And so that's my contribution right now. Cause that's what I have time for, but there's a lot of dancing. We have a really good cheer team at Ross. So. <laughs> yeah, Thank you. Was, yeah. That was impressive. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but that's like where that's the, because there's a lot of dance involved in that and, and, you know, you love to do it. So it never leaves you. You manage to sneak it in for the rest of your life. So it's important to, to foster those, those performance, um, the performance bug. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Um, if yeah. you guys have like any questions, like you can like call me or FaceTime me or whatever, mm -hmm. um, like about performing arts, like about school or like anything. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And I have like a lot of like friends in high school, my sisters in high school at Raw. So like, I also know a lot about that too. Mm -hmm. Um, and how like the day works and everything. So yeah. Yeah. So you can email her too at um if you scroll over her face, it's escalesi grant24 at ross.org. And if you have any questions for Adam, um if you if you want to put your emails in the chat, the they can pick it up. But it's a judd at ross.org if you have any questions for him. Um and me as well. I'm happy to answer questions anytime in the admissions office. And when you are on campus, don't forget that you can always come by and say hi to us and don't forget about us, okay? <laughs> okay um thank you for joining us for this performing art session it was great and um thank you to adam and sienna for your time um we uh, thank can't you. Wait, yeah can't wait to see you at ross um we also have sessions uh next week as well that are really exciting including a student panel a panel so we can have a big discussion with current students